Welcome to the training video for the eCover Creator software. Now, I'm going to go through a little bit more in detail of what you need to do to uh, put these images onto your cover. Okay, you start with, you've got this tab over here, you've got background, front, side, top, etc. Then you can you know, do it for your disk or whatever. But most of the time, if you don't, you won't have a background just because unless you've got like something custom that you're trying to do. So I really, you really won't need to use the background tab. Now for the front, now you can write these down. For the front image, it needs to be, this is just, you can test your own sizes. This is just by experience what I've determined to be the best sizes. For the front would be 400 pixels wide by 450 pixels tall, okay? So this image right here, this front image that I created right here is 400 pixels wide and 450 pixels tall. Okay, that's for the front. Now for the side image, it's going to be um, 120 pixels wide and 450 pixels tall. 120 wide by 450 tall. Okay, and that's this image right here. Okay. And then the top, which is right here, that's going to be 400 pixels wide by 120 pixels tall. Okay. Now we've got that done. Now, like I said, you can adjust your width and your height to anything you want. Most of the time, it's better if you make the image square. It fits in better with uh, your web page most of the time when you do it like that. And then, like I said, you can increase your DPI here. I would put it at 300 which would be Photoshop quality it doesn't really go higher than that so and also the images that you put on have a lot to do with your clarity as well okay now on your on your tabs I mean you don't have a lot on the on the software it's pretty easy to use but on your tabs you just kinda wanna play with these because there's no set rules to anything of how you want it to be like you have your shadow right here right and uh, you can choose these buttons to fade the shadow in or, or not fade. You see that's just a full shadow. It looks better when you fade the shadow in because it looks like it gradually disappears into the uh, canvas. And then if you don't want to show the shadow, you can click that. It won't even show the shadow at all. Or the reflection, excuse me. And then you can, this opacity button um, fades the reflection out or makes it darker and then the length makes the reflection shorter or longer okay it's pretty simple the brightness of course makes it brighter or, or darker okay then the blur reflection makes the reflection clearer I, I usually put mine to look like this you don't have to I'm just saying that that's what I that's what I like to do and like I said just kind of play with these a little bit to get it to the desired look that you want it you know once you've done with your reflection just go to the shadow and uh, this button this is this shadow is your little shadow on the side of the box right here so if you don't want that shadow you just click that if you just want the reflection and then your blur makes the shadow more fuzzy. See how it stand. You can barely see it now because it's wider. And this makes it uh, more of a hard line. And then your density button is going to lighten or darken that shadow, like so. And then this button right here is just your color. If you want to change the color to, uh, you know, a darker, lighter color for the shadow. I mean. Black's usually the best color for a shadow, but if you want something more subtle, you can put a gray or something like that on it. That's really all for that, that tab. Now the object tab 
is your shading highlights, which I feel like are probably the most important part of the box because it makes the box look a lot different than it looks now. If you see right here, it almost looks like it's kind of fuzzy, and that's because the shading and the highlights run 100%. So I like to put them on like 25 or 30% each. And I think you find when you do that, you just have a better looking box. See, now all of a sudden, the clarity comes out from the images, and now you see the box for what it really is. And then um, you can do, like, say you want this box facing the other direction. Um, it pivots it to face the other way. To Like right now, it's facing towards the right side. If you click this button when you print it, it'll flip towards the other side when you save the object. Okay, then the large disk area. Let me uh, pull up our uh, cover action for that. Apply that. I don't have the disk in yet, so what you need to do is go to, to the disk and load your image. Now, typically, your disk image. I'm using the front image for the disk image on this, but typically, your your disk image, the label right here, needs to be smaller than it is on your box. Typically, when I ever I you uh, click on the large disk area, it makes this hole smaller, so you can have more space to work with on your disk and to be honest I think it looks better okay now you can see the whole name on here for this image it happened to work out like that but typically you want to make this smaller to fit on your on your um, CD since the CD is round and it's not you know you don't have as much canvas area as you do on your your front so all you would do on that is is where your front image is just go to your editor and edit the front image to make it a little smaller in Word or Paint or Photoshop or Fireworks or whatever editor to that you're using. And uh, like I said, the shading and highlights, this right here looks to be about 25 or 30 percent and that's usually a good, a good uh, gauge and it usually looks the best. Now the transparent background this is for if you want to, uh, like, say that you have a web page and maybe you've got a, uh, a section that has bonuses in it. Well, in that bonuses section, it may be a different color, like a little box that maybe highlights the bonuses on your web page. So while your web page may be just a, a, the plain white, you may have a bonus box that's like a, a yellow or a tan or, you know, a light blue or, or gray or something like that. Now, to be able to successfully put that image directly into that um, different color without having it show up white as a background, you would just use this transparent background and that would eliminate any type of uh, background color when you paste it in your image to your web page. It comes in real handy when you're putting it into a different color because you've probably seen sites that have um, bonuses or whatever, and they'll have pictures, but they'll have like a white uh, outline around it. It just doesn't look quite as professional as if that outline is the same color. So basically, if you make it transparent, it's going to blend in with any color that you want. So something to keep in mind if you're doing that for bonuses or whatever you want. But me personally, I always put it on transparent background because I never know where I'm going to put that image at. You know, I may do a JV with someone, and that image may need to go on a page that's a, a, a different color than white. If that's the case, then I already have that uh, created uh, to put in there. So if you want to create two copies, you can. One that has a white background and one that has the transparent background is fine. But I would always have a transparent background for a copy. And that's basically, that's basically it. You see right here, you just move your arrow back and forth to choose the different actions that you, that you want um, for your cover and just push apply. And it changes it as the DVD cover, and uh, so that that's really about it. That's you know, there's some cool. There's 15 uh, different actions you can use to bring your images to life here. And uh, just like I said, when it comes to the shadow and the reflection, you know, just play with it, get it like you want it, and then um, you know you'll get used to it. It's just, as you can see, it's there's not many buttons, and it's a real simple software to use. And uh, now some of these actions aren't going to have some of the some of the reflections that you see so it's just something that you know usually the covers that stand up like this right here are going to have the reflection but when they're laying down they're usually not going to have a reflection all they'll have is like a background shadow 
you know, and like I said, you can play with that and adjust that to however you want it. Okay, that's really about it, guys. Once you've uh, got the action that you want, all you really have to do is push on Save Picture, and then um, save it to where you know where you want to save it. You can save it as a JPEG, you can save it as a PNG, or you can save it as a bitmap. Now, a JPEG is going to be a smaller size as far as like how much room it takes up on your web page. Not not the dimensions of it, but the file size. So, in other words, it's a smaller file that's going to load faster. Now, a PNG image or a bitmap image is if you want to edit the image and do your own, uh, you know, compress it yourself into whatever JPEG or GIF image that you want to use in your editor. So, you can choose either PNG or bitmap to do that. The PNG and the bitmap are going to be a higher resolution, so it's going to be a clearer image than the JPEG is. I like to import mine as a PNG and then take it into my editor and then, and then put the quality of JPEG that I want on it. With this, you have it set to a specific number and that's the quality of the image that you're going to get. But if you use PNG or bitmap and edit it yourself in Photoshop or in Fireworks or whatever you're using, you can set a, a value to that JPEG image. For instance, uh, by default, the uh, software say it may save it at 80% compression. Well, you may not want 80% compression. You may want more or less. And if you save it as a PNG, you can you can do that. So that's more for an advanced user. If you're not an advanced user, then um, you could probably just save it as JPEG unless you want the image to be crystal clear and you don't already have a lot of other images on your website, then you can save it as PNG. So we'll just save that as PNG. And then the file name, I'm just going to put sample since it's just showing you what's going on with the software. And then you save it and you're done. And that's really it, guys. That's the software. That's how easy it is to use. Um, and uh, that's it. That's that's all for the video. If you got any questions, you can always email us. Consentsoftwareprofits at gmail.com. Thanks a lot.